Hey, welcome students. In this video, I want to go ahead and talk to you about the kinetic molecular theory postulates. And essentially what we're talking about here is a theory that involves the motion or the movement of molecules or atoms. And so that's essentially what KMT really stands for. Okay, so let me kind of just write this down and break it down a little bit step by step and then introduce the postulates, which are essentially just general guidelines, general rules about this theory that we call the KMT. Okay, so here's, here's what we're talking about. So when we talk about the KMT, what we're really saying is the following. So KMT stands for the Kinetic Molecular Theory. And if we look at these things a little bit in simple terms, kinetic here essentially means movement. Molecular essentially refers to uh, pertaining to molecules or atoms. And theory essentially is a, an explanation that has stood up to testing over a period of time. And for the most part, it is true. Now, there are some instances where, the, where it is not true, but this is the difference between a theory and a law, where the law would essentially stand up to all testing that has been done on it. So this is essentially just an explanation to a phenomenon or a process that we are looking at. So essentially the kinetic molecular theory is an explanation of the movement of molecules or atoms. And when we talk about the kin kinetic molecular theory, there's five things that we really must know. And these are what we call the postulates. And these postulates are the following. So let me just get this out of the way and then we'll, I'll show you what those are. So there are five postulates, and the very first postulate is the following. That when we're talking about kinetic molecular theory, we're really talking about a theory that's relating to gases. And we're talking about large numbers of particles. And so essentially these particles are in great supply. There are a lot of them available. And these particles then are, are going to be interacting with one another. And so the, several, the next uh, several postulates kind of talk to that. The second spot postulate that we need to know about is that these particles are in constant motion. And when we talk about constant motion, the motion that we're re really referring to here is motion that is in a straight line. So it's very linear. Okay? And this motion will continue in a straight line. So for example, if I had a particle inside this box over here, I'm going to create a box on the side. And if I had this particle here, this particle will continue to go in a straight line until it hits a barrier, at which point it will reflect and or deflect depending on the angle at which it's going. So if it's traveling at an angle here, it'll reflect back at the same angle and it'll continue in its pathway until it hits another wall and then it'll reflect and then you know you get the pattern here so it essentially looks like a kind of what many of us see in a screensaver and it repeats the process this is essentially what we're talking about in terms of constant motion in the straight line until it meets up with some other force and that kind of brings us to the next item here and so let me just erase this out of the way so it doesn't confuse us and so essentially, the next thing about these particles that are in constant motion is that these, mo these particles, when, they, when in fact they do come in contact with one another, these particles are going to collide, but these collisions are elastic. And that means that if I have two particles, so I've got one particle traveling in this direction, and I've got another particle traveling in this direction, when they actually do meet and collide here, they're simply just going to bounce back and go in the opposite direction that they came in. Okay, So the energy that they had to begin with, or the kinetic energy that they had, is not going to be lost in any way. And so they'll come in with an X number of kinetic energy, and when they bounce back, they will have the same kinetic energy on their way back. Okay, And so collisions are going to be elastic. And by the same token, when these interact, uh, particles are interacting with one another, the other thing is that they are not going to be attracted to one another. So particles are not attracted to one another. And I'll just write here, to each other. 
And what this means is, if you had several particles, what you would see is one particle would travel in the same line. If you had another particle traveling in this direction here, eventually they're going to you know, get close enough, and I'll draw that here in this area here. But what will happen is that this particle here traveling in from left to right will continue along its direction in its vector. And the same thing with the other one, it'll come the other way and it'll continue. It will not come by and attach or be attracted to the other one forming what would be a two particle mass. Because if that happened, essentially you would have a lot of particles kind of bunching up together and so we would have big groups or blobs of uh, matter or gases. And so that's not what's going to happen. So these particles are going to collide with one another. And when they do, it's elastic. And then um, the reason that it's elastic is because these particles are not attracted to one another. And then that brings us to the last postulate that we want to talk about here. And that postulate essentially tells us that these particles, though, when they are colliding and moving at constant speed, the average kinetic energy the average kinetic energy is affected by temperature. And in a couple of experiments here, you're going to get into see, or you're going to get into a, a situation where you will see that as we increase or decrease the temperature of a substance, it will cause certain molecules to slow down or to speed up. 